everybody, this is Randy with Carchaeology, and I've got a great video and story to share with you today about an absolutely amazing historical vehicle that I am helping market and sell for its owner. So follow along with this. You are going to love it. Now, one day, a couple years ago, a friend of mine called me and said he was coming to town and he wanted to bring me along and show me something special. And when we walked in this warehouse here in Southern California, something special indeed lay before us. This is a storage warehouse where all the cars from the Ford versus Ferrari movie went after filming. And my friend Tori had agreed to buy this Porsche 906 replica that was used in the film. Now, this car played the part of a couple different cars in the film, uh, but it finally was done in that blue and gray combo, which was seen in the Daytona races uh, during the film. In any case, these cars were absolutely spectacular. Immense amounts of money were spent by the production company on making these cars, including the camera car there, the Ferrari replicas, Aston Martin replicas in the corner. I mean, all of these cars were done uh, to visually look exactly like the cars from the period and cars that were used in the different races. Uh, and the other thing that was very interesting about these cars is they weren't just built as movie props. These things were built to drive and drive at speed. The Porsche 906 here that Tori's sitting on, the car that he ended up taking home, uh, is something that the stunt drivers got well up over 140 miles an hour on the track. So these are serious race machines, not just a movie car based on a VW chassis or something like that. So anyway, it was an absolute treat to go through this warehouse to see all of these cars that were used in the film from the Ford Falcons that were used on the production line shots from Ford to the camera cars that were used, the Ferraris, the, uh, you know, all of it. It was just absolute magic and we were pretty much the only ones in the building left with these historic vehicles. Now, Tori bought the 906, and he brought it home uh, to his place in Pennsylvania and proceeded to spend about a year working on the car to improve it significantly over its film use time. He researched a lot of historical documentation on the actual car that it replicated. He contacted the original drivers of the car that raced at Daytona. Uh, he got them to sign a little dash plaque with it. Um, he he got a driving suit used in the movie to go along with it, and he attended to all of the little details to make it a truly spectacular car. And then he befriended somebody that uh, did an amazing film on him and the car, and I want to show that with you now. I definitely consider myself an old soul. I tend to connect with stuff that is vintage. I was probably born four or five decades too late. It's not something you just hop in, turn a key, and, and you're off. But once you are in the car, you strap in, you know, you click that steering wheel into place, you're rewarded with just this otherworldly driving experience. So this is one of five Porsche 906 race cars that was built specifically for the movie Ford v Ferrari. Uh, it, it actually played two different cars in the film, uh, even though it was the same car. It was the uh, number 15 blue and gray car for the Daytona race, and it also played the yellow and white number 32 car for the Le Mans race that you actually see at the end of the film. Like so many other people, I found myself in the theater last year just completely mesmerized by the film Ford v Ferrari. Right there on the big screen was the golden age of road racing being replayed in high definition on a 60 foot screen. And for two and a half hours, I was transported to an era in motorsports I've only ever been able to dream about visiting. Through the internet and social media, I've since been able to connect with a lot of the folks who worked on the film. 
guys like art directors, picture car people, stunt drivers. It was pretty evident after getting to know a lot of these guys that they were just as passionate about that era of racing as I am. Everything was shot with real cars and real drivers, and, and I think that's a lot of what made the film so pure. The Carrera 6 was a really important step in the evolution of the Ferdinand Pieck racing program of the late 60s. It was an evolution that would eventually culminate in the highly successful Porsche 917. Around 65 total 906s were built in 1966, and it kind of makes them a rare sight nowadays. It was the last of the street legal prototype race cars that Porsche made, so it still had working turn signals and wipers, you could drive it on the street even though it was basically a race car. This car in particular was built to portray the original chassis number 906017 Carrera 6 prototype. That car actually competed and won its class in the 1966 Daytona 24 Continental Endurance Race. It was driven by Hans Hermann and Herbert Linga and it finished first in the two liter prototype class and actually finished sixth overall, which in itself is a pretty remarkable feat given how much more displacement the cars like the Ford GT40s had over the Carrera 6. Probably one of the more surprising things that I learned in my research of the original car was that it only competed in the one race here in the US. Um, after that, it was used as a test mule for the Targa Florio. It sustained major frame damage when it hit a sheep of all things on a country road and sadly, the car was deemed a write-off, and it was broken down for parts. Curiously enough, it was only just recently restored within the last decade from basically all the surviving pieces, and it now resides in a private collection in Europe. You know, as collectability and values of vintage race cars climb exponentially, the, the likelihood of experiencing something like that becomes less and less attainable to the average car enthusiast. Real Carrera 6s command two to three million dollars nowadays, but if I can get 80 or 90 percent of that visceral 1960s experience from this film car, I'd call it a win. I'm generally pretty active on social media, uh, especially Instagram. I love connecting with some of the younger fans who uh, follow me just for this car, and it's, it's fun to interact with them. Recently, uh, I had a younger fan, one such fan, that reached out to me on Instagram, and he actually had built a replica of this car out of little bits of cardboard and scotch tape and bendy straws and I was completely blown away by his passion for this car and, and his enthusiasm to, to go to the trouble to build a replica of it out of cardboard. I just thought that was so cool. I was really moved by that. I feel like companies out there like Haggerty are really doing a great job um, crafting programs that raise awareness um, and, and help build that enthusiasm for the younger generation of car lovers. They have programs like teaching kids how to drive a manual gearbox. Um, they have open house events where kids can experience everything from a Model T to a muscle car. It's, it's a neat thing to be involved with and to see these kids really connecting with, with a car that was born you know, generations before they were. As long as we're there to educate, I feel like there's always going to be a younger generation there that's eager to learn. Most of the heroes that I look up to now are either dead or in their 80s or 90s. Hans Hermann, Herbert Linga, Vic Elford. It was just a different generation back then. You know, they, they strapped into cars that required every ounce of skill and energy a driver had, and, and then some. You know, as a car guy, I think everybody kind of has in the back of their mind that we can't take these things with us uh, when we pass away. In that respect, I feel like cars are kind of timeless. Um, as long as you have a good custodian, someone that can take care of it, maintain it mechanically, a car can really outlast all of us. In that way, it's, it's sort of a time machine. Cars are the one link I still have left to that generation. I sit behind the wheel, I close my eyes, and I'm right there in pit row at Daytona or Le Mans. And suddenly, it's 1966 all over again.
And so there you have it, the story of the Ford versus Ferrari Porsche 906. I want to give massive thanks to the folks at Corkboard for allowing us to share this video as a part of the marketing of this amazing vehicle. The car is currently available now for sale, and it is advertised on our website, oldbug.com. And you can take a look at it there to see more details and information. The asking price is $125,000 US dollars. The car is located in Pennsylvania uh, with Tory, with its owner, um, actually Currently, it's in the hands of Porsche at the Porsche Experience Center in Atlanta, but it's going to be leaving there uh, shortly and going back to Torrey. And once it's done with its display at the museum there, it will be available to have new hands hold the wheel. In any case, I hope you enjoyed uh, the story of this car, uh, the footage of our walk around of the video when Torrey first acquired it, and the truly incredible film that Corkboard put together of Tory and his car. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye-bye.